Hello everyone, thanks for tuning in to my session on next level field parameters. So we're going to look at field parameters today and a bunch of tips and tricks on how you can take them to the next level, what they are, some, some interesting use cases with them. Uh, the first thing I want to talk about is um, just get out of the way the, the, the question about field parameters and calculation groups. So why does this question come up? Well, there is some crossover between field parameters and calculation groups. Where that is is that with calculation groups, you can insert measures as column values in a slicer or a chart. And you can also do the same thing with field parameters. But they are actually completely different. So um, apart from that small crossover, field parameters let you uh, switch the column that you're inputting into a visual. And calculation groups allow you to apply DAX and DAX transformation logic as column value filters, is how I'd explain it. Um, so there is, they are completely different, but there is a little bit of crossover. When would you use one and when would you use the other? Well, um, field parameters are, are really easy to use. Um, they're very fast, very efficient. You don't need an external tool for them. They're, they're baked in to Power BI Desktop. So if you can get away with using field parameters, I would use that. Um, often, though, if you need to implement more complex use cases, like you need um, to apply special logic when certain things are selected, or um, you need to be able to code interactions between different things, then, then you need to go with calculation groups. So basically, if it's a simple use case, use field parameters. Uh, if you need to get complex, go with calculation groups. So that's sort of how they're, they're different. They are very different in functionality. They have one small area where they cross over. Um, I would say that calculation groups give you a little bit more flexibility in the logic that you can um, implement, but field parameters are probably um, much simpler to use and have a nice interface and are, and are quite um, fast and efficient. So that's, that's the difference, but what about where do they kind of intersect? So um, the cool thing about using them together is that um, you can fe feed calculation groups into field parameters, uh, and that gives you kind of an easy way to just switch between different calculation groups. So here's a, a simple example. I've um, set up a calculation group with some time intelligence, um, a calculation group that activates a relationship for a delivery date, um, relationship. I'll show you the, the data model that we're working with before we get into things. Uh, so it's a very simple um, star schema. It's um, Contoso, product, customer date, and the sales fact table. Um, there's an inactive relationship between delivery date and date. So I've set up a calculation group that um, activates the delivery date um, relationship for any calculations. And then I've done some dynamic segmentation for some different size sales. I've actually can't even remember what I did there. I think it's just pseudo segments for the demo purpose. But that is a good use case for calculation groups doing dynamic segmentation. So anyway, all I did was create a normal field parameter from the menu item, choosing fields. And I just selected the columns from my calculation groups. And you can cycle through. Um, calculation groups. So I can show some time intelligence, I can flick to a delivery date amount and flick to some segments. Uh, so that's quite powerful in that you can really mix up what you're showing and you can, you, you know, you can use the ability of field parameters to, to easily switch between things but leverage the kind of power of calculation groups to implement, um, you know, complex DAX logic. So the next little um, trick that I want to show you is just simply extending your field parameters to include, um, I guess, to, to add a little bit of modelling to them to, to make them easier to use, to, to expand their use a little bit. We're going to kind of start simply and ramp up the complexity. Um, before we start, I'd mention that um, you know, where calculation groups let you do a lot with DAX, um, field parameters don't. I mean, there's, there's not a lot that you can do with field parameters in terms of DAX. I think uh, where they really shine, though, and where I've found that they can, you know, um, where you can really push them is you can, they allow you to uh, 
to model with them. So you can connect relationships, you can filter them, you can um, make multiple copies of them. Um, and yeah, I think that's, that's where the power of them is. Um, so let's have a look at a simple field parameter. Just zoom this in a bit. So the first thing I want to look at is, I'm going to switch the table view for this. So I created a field parameter um, with heaps of columns in my model. Um, I've got um, customer columns, I've got product columns, and I've got date columns. And the idea here is that you could, um, you can, you can make quite a large field parameter. You don't need to make tons of small field parameters, if you like me, and you, you kind of like playing around with these things, you end up with, you know, tons of field parameters and calculation groups and all different stuff, and it becomes confusing. Um, so you can just make one field parameter and then use a column to categorise them and, and allow yourself or users to filter them. So that's what I've done here. All our, um, whenever we are working with field parameters, they create a calculated table, so we can't use... Power Query to add columns or or do the modelling. We well, you can you can model other tables, but when you're working with the field parameters, you need to do everything in DAX and calculated columns. Um, you know, people always shy away from calculated columns, but field parameter tables are very small, and um, you know, the effect that a tiny calculated columns can have is um, in terms of size and performance and stuff is going to be very negligible. Um, so I've created a new column for this um, field parameter, and I've just used some DAX text functions to pull out the table from the fields column here, which shows the, the table and the column name. Um, I won't go into it too much, but it basically just takes the length of the length of the text string and finds the second apostrophe and then replaces that with blank, kind of trim it off and then trims the first apostrophe off and basically just spits out a table name. This is useful if you wanted to make like a really, really long field parameter and automatically add a table name and categorise it. Uh, another column that I've added here that's just called name is basically just referencing this first column directly. It's just the name for the field parameter. Why have I done that? Well, you can't actually use selected value to access this column here because of the way that field parameters work. So I've added this calculated column, which is just referencing the first column, because then you can actually use selected value on this column. Um, so it's just a useful little trick. Why would you want to use selected value? Well, one of the simplest um, reasons is you might want to make a dynamic title for a, um, a chart that's using field parameters and insert the name of the um, field parameter into the title um, with some other text and, and, you know, something like that. And you'll find that you try and create a title for the chart. You put selected value of, you know, this column in it and it doesn't work. But you can just make a calculated column and you can use selected value to your heart's content. So let's have a look at this one in action. Um, so what this lets you do... Actually, I am missing one slicer here. I think when I was practicing my demo, I took it out. Uh, let me add it in quick. Yeah, so you can see here I've got a table name, which was my column that I added to categorize things, and I can just filter my field parameter. I can show my date columns or show my product columns, and then I can click which one of those that I like, um, or I can, um, you know, use this to select all. Um, so you can switch between all of them. Um, and so when you switch to, like, date like this, you have, like, a preset hierarchy in there, so you can... Um, you know, drill up and drill down. So that's another um, interesting thing about field parameters. We'll look at some more stuff about hierarchies later, but whatever um, order that you click things in when you add a field parameter is the order that it will um, 
come in as the hierarchy. So if I wanted to do year first and then month and then date, if I select year, uh, then month, then date, then the hierarchy is in that order and I can go from year to month to day. But if I selected them in a different order, the hierarchy would be in a different order. So you can also expose something like this to users. You can do like a hierarchy type slicer like this where they can, again, select all the columns in all the date columns, like a, select a hierarchy here, select a different hierarchy here, or they can drill in and select uh, different columns within each table. So you can imagine too, you know, there's interesting uses or solutions where you could basically expose um, the entire model that you want to, to to a user, you know, all of the columns for like an analyst or something like that and have them be able to access everything. And if you are good at um, adding some columns to categorise that you can keep it quite kind of, you know, neat and tidy. Uh, so let's go move on to the next little trick, which is um, returning different measures depending on which, um, which column you've selected for your field parameter. So I'll show you the set up for this. So one, one good thing about field parameters is they're disconnected tables. So um, <clears throat> because they don't affect your model, you can go pretty crazy with your, your modelling with them. You're not going to, um, you know, introduce ambiguity into your model by <laughs> adding a bi-directional relationship or something because they're not actually touching um, your star schema. So uh, you, you can pretty much go nuts and, and model away to your heart's content. Um, so what I've done here is I've got a field parameter with some measures here and I've got my other field parameter that I showed you before that has all the columns, the customer product and date columns. And I've connected them together through a mapping table and I've enabled it so that um, the filter flows through to measures by enabling the bi bidirectional filter here. So when I select a column, it filters... Um, through the mapping table, this other field parameter. So one field parameter filters another field parameter. Uh, let's have a look at the map. Well, let's have a look at, yeah, let's have a look at the mapping table. Uh, yeah. So what I've done here is I've basically generated some, a table that um, has all the um, possible um, well, it's actually the, the sort orders from the field parameter. I'm going to flick back for a sec because that's a, another point that I want to mention is every field parameter has this order column which sets the order that the field parameter options will display in. And so this is like a unique identifier for each field parameter and it's an integer. So it's really handy to use as like a key to join things together. So in most of the examples you see, I use this order column to to do my modelling because it's, a, like I said, it's a, a, a unique identifier that can act as a key for each um, field parameter and you don't have to add anything. It's already sort of baked in. So what I've done in the mapping table is I have um, basically a mapping between the, um, the, the order values or our key, what I'm using for a key in the... Um, column field parameter and then this value one has keys from the measure field parameter and I've mapped them together so I've said that if you know the key in our column field parameter is one to six we want to be able to see have measure value one. So the way I've done it I've, I've just filtered using our table name that I created earlier in the columns which was handy to, to simplify code a bit I've just filtered um, to show the customer columns and then um, selected the order column that I want. And then for each one of those, I've said that I want to see measures one, two, three, and four for our customer, um, our customer keys. And then for products, I've said we want to see one, two, and five. And for dates, we want to see all of them. If we look at the measure field parameter, you'll see here that uh, I'll just sort it to make it a bit easier. So you see I've got a uh, number of sales, sales amount, new customers, a number of customers, new customers and distributions. And so what my goal is, is I want to show um, customer-related uh, measures, which are one, two, three and four, 
So is that number of customers, new customers and sales? I want to show those when it's a customer column. And when it's a product column, I want to show sales and distributions, because distributions is a, is a product-related uh, measure or a more product-related one. And then when it's a date, um, a date field parameter, I want to um, show all of the measures because everything relates to date. So essentially the result that I want is when a user selects a date field to show in the chart, they can then access all of the measures. But if they show a customer um, field in the chart, then they can only access customer measures. And if they show a product column in the chart, then they can only access product measures. And so the way it works is through the mapping, we select a customer column here. It filters the measure mapping, which then returns the, the measures that are available for that column. So let's have a look at it in action. Uh, so you can see here, uh, I'll just reset this one. So if I select um, a customer, I get my new customer measures. If I select date, I'll get all measures. And if I select um, product, I get my measures that I want there. So pretty, pretty um, useful little thing for reports if you want to restrict um, the way that users interact um, with charts and um, make sure that they're looking at the measures that they should be um, for certain columns. Um, you could easily, you know, just drop this into a chart. Let me give it a quick example. Uh, so we grab our measure field parameter and our columns, and then we have number of sales by brand, and we can click a product one. But if I change to customer, then I can access customer ones. So that's how that works. All right, the next um, thing that I want to look at is actually getting a bit dangerous and... <laughs> filtering your model with field parameters. I've got another file um, open for this, so I'll just switch to that one. Let's have a quick look at the modelling that's been done. So it's quite simple, but um, you know this is still Contoso, so we've got the customer and you know simple star scheme with customer and product. Um, but what I've done here is I've, I've created a location field parameter. Let's have a look at that one. Zoom that in. So it's very simple. It's just country and city. But what I've done is added a customer type column, which um, which says if it's country, then return company. If it's city, return person. Um, and so customer type is actually a field in our customer dimension that um, categorises customers as either being a company as a person or a person. And so all I've done is with that company person um, column here with customer type, I've connected this to the customer dimension here. You can see customer type joins customer type. So when I change a field parameter for location, it's actually going to filter my model. When I select in my field parameter country, it's going to filter the model to be only company type customers. So there's probably some pretty wacky out there use cases you could use this for, but I've just got quite a simple one here where you'll see when I select country, I get only company type customers and company sales. And when I select city, I get people and people sales. So that's, um, yeah, you, can, you aren't limited to just filtering, you know, having field parameters filter each other or... Um, that kind of thing, you can actually connect them to your model and, and use them as kind of, you know, another uh, sort of snowflaked dimension, I guess. All right, so moving on, I'll close this one. So we looked at filtering the model. The next one I want to look at is making a dynamic hierarchy. So let's have a look at our dynamic hierarchy field parameter. 
So I have to give a shout out here to Sam Fisher, um, who um, did some great work on field parameters, published a couple of really cool blog posts, um, and um, he knows his stuff. He's a, he's a good guy. He, um, he actually solved this one. I, I tried it in a different way and came up with a solution, but his solution was much simpler and, and much better. So definitely check out Sam Fisher's blogs if you want to uh, look at um, field parameters more. So what's cool, uh, well, not what's cool, but what's useful here with um, field parameters is that you can, um, you can enter the same column multiple times. So you can see here I've entered education, gender, and occupation, and I've, and I've just set up a field parameter with that, and then I've edited my field parameter, and I've duplicated those columns three times in this table to give me three sets of the same columns. Um, and then, you know, you can edit field parameter tables directly to add columns to them. So that's what I've done here. Rather than add a new calculated column, I've just edited the table directly. And so what I've done is I've set the sort order here for each column, but I've set it randomly in each set. So, you know, it goes 0, 1, 2 for the first um, set of three, and then it goes 5, 3, 4, and then 8, 7, 6. So it, it switches the order around. If you see I've sorted it here, you end up with education, um, uh, no, it is in order here, but, um, sorry, I'll sort it here. So yeah, you get education, gender, occupation, then you get gender, occupation, education, then you get occupation, gender, education. So three different sort orders for the three duplicate sets of columns. And then I've, to make it, e make it easy for users to use, I've added a a column that just categorizes them as hierarchy order one, hierarchy order two, or hierarchy order three. So the three sets have a label. Um, and that's all there really is to it. You can, um, we'll have a look at it in action now. So if I just expand this out. So you see we have our hierarchy with, um, it's gonna test me here. So that's occupation, gender, and education. And if we click on a different, um, so sorry, I've dragged the dynamic hierarchy field parameter into this table and just added a sales amount. And as we click through different hierarchies, you can see it just flips them around. And um, yeah, you can flip them around so you can um, see them in the different order. So obviously when you are using field parameters, you can just expose these field parameters to the user and they can um, you know, manually just add the columns in the order that they want. But that kind of you know, requires education for users and you have to tell them, oh, if you want to see it in a different order, you've got to select in a different order. It is kind of nice to be able to just um, give them preset options and just one click to flip the hierarchy around. So quite cool. You do still run into issues, I think, when you um, start selecting them in different orders. It can collapse some of the, the fields here. So um, that was sort of the issue I ran into with another solution for this I was working on. So um, it's not perfect, but it's pretty good. <laughs> um, all right, so we've looked at um, a few tricks. We're going to go with the sort of most complex now, which is... Um, being able to kind of switch uh, fields around between different areas in a report or between around in visuals like between the tooltip and the different axes and stuff. Um, sort of it can give the appearance of like rotating the, the fields around. So let me show you some modeling for this one. So what I've done here, I've created three identical field parameters. So the names are not that important. I've just named them something. But even though this one's called legend, it's not always going to be... Um, well, this one will sit in the legend. So, yeah, there's, there's a field parameter for the legend, a field parameter for the tooltip, and a field parameter for the x-axis. And they're all identical. We'll have a quick look at them. We'll have a look at one, but they're all the same. So if we look at the x-axis one... Sorry, look at the x-axis one. Hopefully that's viewable, this little table. Um, you can see that uh, it's very simple. It's got three customer columns and three product columns. And it's, um, yeah, very simple setup. 
And so I've duplicated that three times here. And, and the idea is that uh, you, these, it probably looks more complicated is, than it is. These three tables here are just bridge tables to implement the relationship. So I can um, have, you know, to avoid a many-to-many -many relationship and have this table filter these field parameters. So it just flows through these bridge tables with this bidirectional relationship. Um, and the idea is that, you know, each one of these field parameters has that order number. And so when I choose, I have different combinations that I can choose in this table and it filters different columns in each field parameter. So if I want to sh say show field parameter one here, field parameter two here and field parameter three here, I can set one in one column here, two in another column and three in another column and it will filter them all independently. But then if I want to switch, I can switch to a different combination between the three field parameters by choosing a different selection up here. So that's the, the simple explanation. The actual implementation of this one's a little bit complex, but you can do it quite simply. All you need to do is have different combinations of field parameters that you want to view in this column and be able to filter um, your field parameters from, from a table here and be able to, to, to use a slicer to move through the different combinations that you want here, and that will, um, you know, in a report with a slicer, flip through different um, column combinations between the three field parameters. Let's have a look at the field combinations. It's um, it's a little bit complex, but let's let's go there. All right. So it's probably a little difficult to see the table, but bear with me. Um, so what I've done, I wanted to come up with um, basically cross-join all of the keys, I'll call them keys, but they're the order numbers from the field parameters. I wanted to cross-join them all to get the unique combinations of them so I could, you know, be able to start cycling through those unique combinations to, to filtering those field parameters with it. So, um, but what I didn't want was um, duplicates. I don't want to have the same column in my x-axis as I have in my legend or my tooltip. So I don't want a combination of 333. Three, three. I always want unique numbers. So what I did, I just um, grabbed the... They were already unique, so I probably didn't use, need to use distinct here. I could probably just use values, but anyway. Uh, there may be a, you know, a simpler way to do this in Power Query or something, but this is the way I did it for at the moment. Um, so I just grabbed the unique um, keys from one of the field parameters and then I generated, um, for each of those keys, I generated the keys from the other field parameter but put in a condition that they don't equal um, the value that they're being generated against. So for three, it'll generate every number except for three that's present in the other field parameter. And then I just did the same thing again. I generated for those two um, for, the, for that column that I'd already generated, I generated again the order numbers from the other field parameter, but where it doesn't equal the first two columns. So that gives me unique um, combinations, but without um, any duplicates. So then I needed to um, group them together. To um, well, what I wanted to do was was find the groups of combinations. Is, is I guess the way to explain it. So. If I have, you know, in this first row, I have three, two, one, I wanted to be able to filter to the six, combina six possible combinations of those three numbers. So I wanted to be able to filter to show only combinations with three, two, and one. So the way I did that was um, basically um, concatenate the, the values in the columns but um, what's useful here is in concatenate x, you can sort the concatenation. So I sorted the concatenation so that no matter what order the numbers are in here, they always return the same order here. So 3, 2, 1 becomes 1, 2, 3. And if I filter the group to be 1, 2, 3, all the possible combinations of those three numbers um, turn up in the columns. So that let, gives me a way to filter to all the possible combinations of three columns from the field parameter. But then I need to specify which one I need to be able to cycle through those. Um, 
I mean, the way that uh, I set this up because I thought it would be simple this way rather than just, you know, flipping through unique combinations endlessly. I like the idea of being able to find like a group of columns that you want to work with and then be able to cycle them around. You'll see how it works in the report. So what I then needed to do was to rank these um, combinations. So I created this rotation column here, which um, basically just ranks the different um, uh, combinations um, based on the index. So the index is just the straight concatenation of the numbers, and I use that to give them a rank so I can get them from one to six. So now I have can filter to a group of combinations, and then I can filter um, one of those combinations. So let's have a quick look at it in an in a example. So here I have the, the values that are present in my field combinations table. So these are the columns in here that filter each of the field parameters. So you can see I've got the combinations of 2, 1, 3 now because I've picked group 1, 2, 3. I get 2, 1, 3. But as I cycle through the different rotations, it gives me the different possible combinations of those numbers. And so how this works in a report is we can use this to select a group of columns to be used in visuals. And then by pu pu moving through the rotations, it cycles those columns around between the different locations where the field parameters are. So let's have a look at the report and see it in action. So there's some hidden slices here. And I'll just show you them. You can see these hidden slices. The same thing I showed you before. There's the, the group here, and then there's the rotation. And I've just set up some bookmarks where this dice button um, has a bookmark that jumps through the different groups. It does it at a certain interval, because if you go through them incrementally, they don't really change as much. So to give it kind of the appearance of random, it jumps through um, at different intervals and cycles through all of them. Um, and then I have this rotation button, which is more bookmarks, which just move through these um, different rotations. And it appears random because the idea is a user can come here, click the dice until they find a set of um, field parameters here, which they like the look of, a set of columns that seem like they're interesting or see something interesting. And then if they want to see the data in a different way, they can click the rotate button and um, cycle those um, around to see the data in a different way. So I'll just hide these again and show you it in action. So I click the um, dice here, and you can see that it starts showing different, um, different combinations of columns here. So every time I click the dice, I'll get a different set of columns here. But then if I see a set of columns that I like, like here, gender, brand, and manufacturer, but I want to see that in a different way, I can click the rotate button, and it starts to... Um, rotate those fields around and put the um, different field in the, the legend, a different field on the axis, and a different field in the tooltip. So I took it one step further using one of the, um, the tricks that I showed you before to, to filter different measures for different selections. So I have, coming off of this x-axis field parameter, I have another kind of mapping bridging table that lets me filter the, the measures that are returned. And this is the same measure table that we looked at before that has product measures and um, customer measures. And so what I wanted to do is whenever a, um, whenever a column in the x-axis is for customer, it shows customer measures. But if a column in the x-axis is for product, it shows product measures. And then I'll give you a quick look at the table that lets the filter happen. So it's just, again, another one of these tables that maps the sort of keys together where we have um, basically one, two, and three uh, customer columns in the, in the x-axis field parameter. So for one, two, and three here, I've returned one, two, three, four in the measures, which is the customer measures. And then for... Four, five, and six, which is product columns, I've returned one, two, three, and five, which are product-related measures. 
So then you'll see here I have a product um, measure in the x axis, a product column, sorry, in the x axis here, product brand. So I have this product measure distributions available. But if I rotate to get my gender into the x axis, you'll see that I get um, a different measure up here. So if I click and then I get rotate till gender appears in the x axis and you'll see I get number of customers instead of, or new customers, sorry, instead of distributions. That is pretty much it for my um, demonstration. Hopefully you guys got something out of it. Um, you know, feel free to uh, hit me up on Twitter or, or LinkedIn if you have further questions. I'll share this um, file if you need to, if you want to look into it further and um, experiment more with some of the things that we looked at. Um, I guess my final thoughts are, um, yeah, definitely experiment with modelling with field parameters. It's lots of fun and there's heaps of stuff you can do. And if you have a good understanding of what field parameters are and how to implement modelling with them, you can really um, use them to do some kind of more advanced um, use cases and some interesting things for um, end users and reporting. All right. Thanks so much. Um, see you later.